I've kept you for a while, but I do want to ask about uh, your Raw appearance recently because that, for me, that really stood out because uh, a little sneak behind, you know, the camera. We talked briefly last year because I wanted to get this up and going. A lot of stuff got in the way. Never was able to quite get things going the way I wanted to. Fast forward almost a full year, and there you are on Raw. And I, at first, I didn't even, like, it didn't even click because, you know, sometimes with enhancement guys, you, you just kind of zone out. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. look that closely, especially when there's multiple people at once. Yes. It's kind of it's kind of just a wave of people, you know? And yes. then I was like, wait a second. And then it clicked. I was like, whoa, how did how did that happen? And what was the experience like? Yeah, so uh, it's fun. I mean, I've been doing extra work for WWE since 2003. Yeah. Uh, off and on, you know. Uh, but for whatever reason, I've never had a Raw match. Uh, and that's one of those, again, you know, that's one of those bucket list things. Like, I grew up watching Monday Night Raw. Uh, 30 years in January. Yeah, which is crazy to me because I, I remember being excited for the first one, you know, <laughs> like, uh, and just like, I mean, just full circle there, like, when Tony Mambaluk and I won the Ring of Honor tag titles, it was at the Manhattan Center. And that's, you know, like, dude, that's where the first Raw was. Like, oh my God, you know. But anyways, so uh, but yeah, I've been doing I've been doing extra stuff from for WWE for forever. You know, my whole adult life, I've been and uh, I've had matches. I've had darks. <clears throat> I I did an ECW match, <clears throat> but for whatever reason, I just the Raw spot never happened. Uh. Well, this last one, you know, uh, I, I stay I stay pretty busy. You know, anything in the southeast, I try to make sure my emails are sent out in time and uh, let them know, like, hey, I, I'd love to be a part of the show. And I've got so many friends that work for the company. It's it's just hilarious to me. And like, it's one of those things that I don't really take into thought until we were at raw this time and the guy that i got pinned with is uh one of my best friends and we were standing waiting for our physicals and as we're standing there every time someone would pass by they would you know kind of give the wave to the extras and then stop and go sal you know and it's just i've been around forever so i know you know and uh as we're doing that, Adam Pierce walks by, who was the agent on the match, and he goes, oh, my God, Sal? He's like, yeah, what's up, Pierce, who I've known from, you know, I knew Pierce from my Ring of Honor days. Yeah. And he's like, you're working tonight. And I go, I hope so. <laughs> and he goes, no, I'm telling you right now. Uh, I got a spot. It's yours. I was like, oh, my God. Like, turn it down. There's more extras behind me. I don't want that heat. But like, yes, a million <laughs> times. And uh, he was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're, it's going to be three or four guys. We'll figure it out. But you're 100% one of the guys. He was like, oh, my God, this is this is perfect. But I've also been in that boat before where earlier this year, in April of this year, I was supposed to get squashed by Veer on Raw. And they swapped it out. Like, Raw goes on the air. When Raw starts on TV, oh, when, uh, when Raw starts on TV, I'm scheduled to be working Veer. And by the end of the first segment, they swap me out for somebody else. Oh, wow. So Yeah, so, like, now I know, like, I don't ever tell anybody, like, I have a match at segment eight, please watch. Yeah. But, you know, Pierce, Pierce runs it by me, and uh, I just happen to be first in line for the physical, and he's like, when you're done with the physical, go ahead and meet me down at ringside. So I go down by ringside and him and Omos are talking and they're talking about the finish and I go, oh, I'll take that. And Pierce goes, uh, that's a scary bump. Are you sure you want to do that? And he was like, make, make one of the kids take that. I go, no, no, no. Like my son gets to see me on Raw. I'm going to take up as much TV time as I can. Even getting pinned, there's more face time for me if I'm eating that finish, because you're going to show a replay of the finish. That's a smart way to look at it, because I don't think a lot of people would necessarily look at it that way. You know, if anything, a lot of people would probably be like, 
oh, I don't want to be pinned. You know, what if it, you know, but you're smart. You see that as more television exposure, more Absolutely. showing people who I am and what I can do because it's like a commercial when you're on TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all it is. It's me selling myself. And like, if I can do anything, I can fall down and make things look like they hurt <laughs> because at my age, they usually do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but like, so, you know, I'm like, please let me eat the finish. And he goes, okay, yeah, no, 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 it's yours if you want it. He goes, but I, you know, I take that bump at practice all the time. It sucks. I go, oh, I have no doubt about that. <laughs> but, you know, we, we're going to do this. Uh, and my buddy, my buddy was the one that, that got pinned, you know, with me. Mm. And so uh, it was, it was just super cool that like the two of us that, you know, like we, constantly are texting each other about stupid like today he just texted me he goes hey when are we going to add manu to the bloodline <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And I, was like, I, hope, I hope never i hated when he got added to legacy <laughs> it was like, oh what a reference like no that's fair yeah but i mean that's that's our conversations constantly uh but you know and so like we, I was, it was just such a super, super insane moment that we got to do that together. But like, right before we go out, you know, we're in Gorilla and Austin Theory is the segment before us. And I've known Theory forever, you know, and, and Rollins, who I talk to Rollins all the time. They're both coming through Gorilla, and they're just like, oh, my God, Sal, like, this is awesome. I'm so glad you get to do this. You know, and there's peers, and I'm with MVP, who, you know, like you, we talked about earlier, I did Impact with, you know, 100 million years ago. And it's AJ like and Truth those... were probably there, right? Yeah, 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 no, I, and Gallows Crazy. is back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's just so many guys. Like I said, I mean, it, it, it's, it's nuts. The number of guys, you know, especially like PD, PD, PD's an agent there. Uh, Abyss. You know, Abyss is an yep. agent. Yeah, it's just wild. But uh, right before we go out, like I told my buddy, I said, hey, I'm going to kind of drag my feet a little bit because I know our entrance isn't on TV and I'm going to try to drink up as much of this as I can. And he goes, oh, yeah, no, 100%. I'm with you. And so like It was just one of those, like, I genuinely hope everybody that ever has the urge to lace up a pair of boots and chases this dream gets that feeling at least once. Uh, I mean, it's crazy to think that, like, because I've been on Raw before and, you know, backstage segments and security spots and all that stuff, but to finally get this, like, I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 in September. And happy birthday. Oh, you know, thank you. And here I am on Raw, right? Like, it's just, and it was worth every, every hurdle that I had to jump to get to that point. Even if it was just two minutes and I, you know, I didn't get anything but a choke and a forearm, I did it. Right, like that's Absolutely. the ulti- and like I made sure like there was very few people I texted, but I made sure I texted my son, said, "Hey, baby, make sure you're watching Raw tonight." Because again, I'm not going to tell him I've got a match just in case he gets scratched or something. Because yeah. I've been, I've had darks before where I've been at the curtain, and they've said, "Ah, scratch it!" I'm like, no, 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 don't scratch it. I'm ready to go. Like. Change of plans. We're having this match. So like I, I just I, I tried to eliminate all the variables and but I made sure he knew like please be watching around this time. And uh as cool as all of it was, and like keep in mind, so we're out there during the commercial break and they're showing commercials to the live crowd, and one of the commercials is for the Undertaker's Netflix show. So like I'm standing at ringside when the gong hits, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's super cool, right? Like, 
<laughs> I know Undertaker's not coming out, but I'm one of my dreams was always to be a druid. Like that was always the extra goal for me was to be a druid. And I like here I am at ringside, Undertaker's music playing. Like this is super cool. Uh, but getting to uh, getting to come back and like just that feeling of knowing like everything I was supposed to do, I crushed. Uh, you know, almost was super happy. Pierce sent me a really heartfelt text afterwards, just like you know, uh, very congratulatory. Uh, but you know, just a bunch. There was a bunch of guys that were genuinely happy for me. But there was nothing better than getting back to my phone and having that text from my son. Uh, uh, it just. It's, it's not dream, man. It's the yeah, dream. I mean, it's just uh, I I've said it. I've said I probably said it 20 times a night. I will never stop saying it. I'm just a I'm a lucky dude, man. I'm a very, very, very lucky. Uh, and, uh, you know, just got to keep this ball rolling. And those you know, are like, going to live forever, too. Like, you know, it's on Peacock. It's on WWE Network. It's on. Uh, in some parts, yeah. it's on Disney Plus, and then it's you know on YouTube. It's on all these places all over the world, and it's probably gonna outlive future generations to come. You know, one hundred percent. You know, it's it's wild. It's just cra- It's just crazy to think like as much of a tiny little foot- footnote as it is. Like my name's now on that list of people that have performed on Raw. You think about all the hundreds of millions of people that put on wrestling boots and wanted to do this and be a part of this industry that never got that shot. And like, now my name's forever on that list and it can't be undone. Yeah. It's wonderful. So real quick, what was it like working with him? Because he is he the most... Is he the largest individual you've ever wrestled? He's, he's, be, right? he's the largest. He's, he's the largest individual that's ever been alive. Uh, my favorite. <laughs> yes, my favorite part is so right before we go out because we've got the spot where I jump on his back and then the three of us that are still up start hitting him. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pierce, who's our agent, goes, "Hey guys, I know you know this, but like, make those shots count. Like, he's a big guy." Don't throw weak shots because then in turn, everybody involved is going to look weak. Make, make these, make these shots mean something, you know? And uh, right before I go out, Pierce tells me, he goes, Hey, lay him in, you know? Cause like I've got his back. So I know I'm just throwing forearms to his back. I know how to hit very solid, very, in very safe places. You know, a forearm to the back is not going to kill you. So I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. The, the lights are on, blah, 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 blah. We get to the spot. I kid you not. I bring my forearm back, and I have never in a million years ever swung my forearm. I mean, I'm, I'm Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire in one. Like, I'm swinging for all the fences. Right? Like, this is more than a moonshot. This is a Saturn shot. I'm going, like, I blast him with a forearm right to the back. And he goes, harder. <laughs> That's fantastic. Harder? I can't. <laughs> like, dude, I just shot on you, and you don't even know it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Harder, literally impossible for me, bro. You win. Like, we just take it home now. Every ounce of energy you can muster, <laughs> yes. nothing. Every everything I had, I hit this man with, and he was just like, "Dude, you, I'm gonna need you to connect." I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was. I mean, it was. It was very cool. I mean, he was so gracious, and the whole time it was, you know, I'm green, but I, you know. Once I get it, I got it. And I mean, he, he was awesome. He was, uh, we did a spot where he gave me a gourd buster and, you know, normally you hook the head for a suplex. My arm didn't reach around. It wasn't a lack of effort. It was just the fact that he is an elephant sized man and (laughs) my arms only go so long. And, you know, 
that that's the kind of person that you're not going to just find. You're not going to be able to just pick out like, you know, people yes. can be critical, but A, you made it sound like he's humble and hard and wants to learn, which is awesome. But also, yes. you just, you can't teach size. You know, you can't. No, no. He, I mean, he passes the airport test. There's not a place in the world where he walks that people don't stop and look to see what he's doing. I think he might like pass the spaceship test because he's not yes. big. He's probably yes. from up there. Like, no, <laughs> they're scanning. They're just like, oh, that's a mountain. No, that's a man. That's, that's big old dude. But I mean, he, he couldn't have been more more humble. He couldn't have been nicer. I mean, he uh, he definitely went out of his way to thank us multiple multiple times and you know especially with with banks to just you know uh it was one of those things where i think i took the squisher in the buckle and i'm selling down and mvps are ringside yelling and i kind of just you know i'm laying there and i'm looking over and i'm just like this is this is storybook stuff 20 you know? years after working with them you know yeah in front of i don't know how many people probably 100, 200 people, you know? Yeah. 200. yeah. Uh, you know, this thing is like walking down that ramp and impact was a big deal. Yeah. You know, for both of us at the time, because, you know, he was also, you know, he's trying to get looked at just like I was. Absolutely. And, and for it to, uh, you know, come full circle where we're sold out, sold out house in Charlotte, uh, it was, it was one of those, like I said, I'm, I'm so fortunate that I learned to stop and appreciate the moment. And I did. And I mean, it was just, you know, like I said, no matter what happens from this moment forward, that can never be undone. Uh, it was, it was super, super cool fairy tale storybook stuff. It minus, you know, no, I was just saying minus me being dropped from 7,000 feet in the air. <laughs> I mean, you, you even have the giant, so it is a literal fairy tale. Yes, yes. 